Here we're going to consider the expansion of gases, considered thermodynamically. And when I say expansion of gases, I just don't mean expansion. Uh, it's also contraction of gases, too. So we have, we're going to have three examples here. First example will be the adiabatic irreversible expansion of an ideal gas. Let's draw a picture of that. So here will be our initial state. And here's our classic piston. And it's going to be adiabatic, which means that heat cannot be transferred to and from the surroundings, which means that we're going to have to make this container here insulated. So here's an insulated container so that no heat can be transferred. So we're going to start with that initial state. And what we're going to do is expand this gas to a final state in which the volume is increased. And again, this is insulated. And here are, here's the insulation here. And this is adiabatic. And recall, adiabatic means Q is equal to zero, or DQ, infinitesimal heat change, is equal to zero. So no heat can be transferred to and from this process. Let's start with the first law of thermodynamics. DU, let's use the differential form, is DQ uh, plus DW. And we'll now, as usual, start with a general equation and make some assumptions. This is just equal to DW. We're doing that because we're assuming that it's an adiabatic process. And let's uh, put this equal to minus PDV. So we're assuming the only work we can do is PV work. And well, essentially that's it. So that's how you would uh, calculate the energy change, the internal energy change for a process in which you just change the volume adiabatically and irreversibly. Okay, so we have some external pressure here. So it's there and there. Hmm. So if you have a constant external pressure and no heat can get in or out, what does that mean? Hmm. Somehow it must have had some energy to push this piston up. The system inside here did work on the surroundings. So what must have happened? Well, internally there must have been some temperature change. And in fact, that's uh, equivalent to the first law of thermodynamics. I mean, if you have some work being done, that energy to do that work just didn't come out of any uh, nowhere. In fact, it just came. It came from the internal energy here because we can't get any energy or any. Uh, heat coming out here. So the temperature of the gas must have changed. In fact, if you think about it, the temperature of the gas, let's see, you're doing work on the surroundings. Uh, so the temperature of the gas must have decreased. Actually, just let's see that. Remember in the last lecture that we said U was a function of temperature only for an ideal gas. Okay, so let's make that assumption. So this implies that if we look at the differential change in U, du, that is equal to CV dt. So there must have been a temperature change here because we have pressure, volume changes, the pressures, uh, external pressure is constant, the volume is changing, so the temperature must have changed. In fact, well, let's just see if the temperature went up or down. So we have the infinitesimal change in energy minus PdV, and we can also equate that to the in uh, the infinitesimal free en or internal energy change as CV dt. Okay, so we know that minus P dV is equal to CV dt. So if dV is greater than zero, so the gas expanded, expanded, this must mean that dt must be less than zero. That's a negative sign. So if that's greater than zero, this has to be less than zero. Pressure and uh, heat capacity at constant volume are all positive numbers. So this implies that the temperature decreased in the adiabatic irreversible expansion. And it sort of makes sense from the first law. You don't get energy for free. You can't create it or destroy it. So this energy that the system is using to push the piston, that came from a change in the internal temperature here. That's kind of interesting gas cools off when you expand. Again, we made the uh, assumption here of an ideal gas. It's adiabatic and only PV work can be done. In that case, we'll find, uh, you find that the expansion of that gas leads to a cooling off. We'll talk about in the next section of this lecture, the f using real gases, we'll find in fact that things are a little different for real gases. But for this ideal gas case, it's always going to cool off when you expand the gas. All right, so that's kind of interesting. So two ways to calculate 
the change in internal energy. It's heat capacity constant volume times the change in temperature or pressure times the change in volume when you have an adiabatic irreversible expansion at constant external pressure. That's interesting.